What's up? Welcome back to the channel, to everyone's favorite Brazilian Jiu Jitsu YouTube series, The Road to Blue Belt. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the five things I genuinely wish that I knew before competing in BJJ for the first time. This is from a white belt's perspective to a white belt. There's also a bonus tip at the end, so make sure, stick around for that. Number one is make sure you're in the right weight class. Now, I can speak to this from personal experience because the first tournament that I did, I was in the 88 kilo weight class. The second one, I was also in 88, but the third one, I decided to cut down to the 82 kilo weight class. Now, the thing that I learned from moving from one weight class to the other is with the first competition that I competed in the higher weight class, I actually weighed in at 79 kilos in the gi. So I was well and truly under the weight class below me. So I technically could have easily competed the weight class below me with a three kilos to spare. Weigh yourself after you've had some food, after you've had a whole bunch of water, you've hydrated in your gi, use that as a gauge to where you need to be. Now, there's so much information out there and so many other bigger, more experienced YouTubers than I have have spoken about not cutting weight for your first Jiu Jitsu competition. And I adhered to that advice for the first two, and then I decided to cut weight for the third. Now, unfortunately, I didn't do a very successful cut, which is ironic because I'm a nutritionist and I, I coach other athletes on how to cut weight for Jiu Jitsu tournaments. I know, right? And it meant that I came in pretty dehydrated and my performance suffered. What I've learned is that if you are in between brackets, say you're smack bang, you could go up or you could go down. I highly recommend going up. Now, the reason is you're not gonna be stressing about making weight. You're gonna comfortably make weight. You're going to be able to eat. You're gonna be able to hydrate. Lesson two, show up early. Don't just show up early. Show up earlier than you think is early. In my first BJJ tournament, I planned to show up at a certain time, which was going to be early. However, uh, I got delayed with parking and, and everything else that was going on on the, the high stress morning of trying to get to the venue and, and get on the mats and, and do well. It ended up causing a lot of stress and I was actually late. I only just made my first match and I had almost no opportunity to warm up. I was frantically trying to warm up. I forgot my mouth guard on the mats. I didn't have a water bottle with me, which is another bonus tip. Make sure you bring a water bottle with you mat side uh, so you can hydrate and, and sip on water before you go on and immediately after you come off. It was absolutely frantic. I was stressing to the max and ultimately it would have affected my performance. Now, I was able to secure the victory on my first ever match, which is pretty cool. However, it could have been a lot easier on me if I showed up a bit earlier and had a more robust plan. Which brings me to number three, bring more food than you think you'll need. If you've spoken to anyone that's competed before in BJJ, they'll probably tell you that it's important to bring some form of snack. Yeah, you can always get the acai bowl at the venue because every jiu-jitsu competition has acai. However, it's really important to bring some snacks with you. The food that I recommend that you bring is high carbohydrate and simple carbohydrate foods like bananas, like some honey, maybe a rice cakes with a bit of nut butter and honey, and also Gatorade, Powerade, or another form of electrolyte powder drink. So it's really important to make sure that you have more food than you'll actually need just in case. Because with Jiu Jitsu, generally most competitions, unless they're specifically around Robin, they'll be a knockout format. So you don't actually know how many matches you have in a day. You may show up and get knocked out in the first round, shit happens, or you may go five matches all the way until the final, and then you'll need to back it up in the next bracket if you're also competing in no gi or in the absolute division or what have you. So now my standard is I bring a full lunchbox full of snacks, heaps of fruit, like yogurt, nuts. I have at least three or four large bottles of Powerade or Gatorade. So at least like four liters of the stuff. 
just to make sure that I have absolutely everything I need during the day. And if worst comes to worst, particularly if I'm competing with teammates and someone else isn't as prepared, I can offer them some food or something like that to help out my teammates. So make sure you bring way more food than you'll need. The fourth thing I wish I knew before I started competing is don't sign yourself up for every single division that you can. My recommendation, particularly for your first couple of times competing, is just do your weight division in gi and in no gi. Leave absolute out for now. Unless you're a big unit and you know you're likely to win absolute or absolute division is sort of your division anyway, and it's kind of like a second crack, Go for it. For the big units out there, ignore everything I'm saying. My first comp, I signed up for the absolute division in the gi, and it was immediately after I just did the finals in the gi for my weight division, and I got choked out in the finals. If you haven't seen that video, it's pretty funny, so check it out. So I got choked out in the finals, and then I had to back it up in the absolute division. And I'm no quitter, so I didn't pull out of that. I, I went in guns blazing, and ironically, my jujitsu, according to the coach that was there, was the best in that match because I was kind of like, ah, oh, well, this guy's like 100 kilos, it doesn't really matter. And um, I still lost though. <laughs> but the, the jujitsu that I pulled off was apparently a lot better, ironically. And generally speaking, and I can only speak to my experience in competitions and BJJ tournaments, that the absolute division is generally after all your weight divisions. So that's generally how they run it and all the competitions I've been at, they run no gi after gi. So you're in for a huge day, particularly if you are making the finals or you do have a large bracket and you're progressing in the rounds, that's a lot of jujitsu and it's gonna take a massive toll, not only on you physically, but also mentally. So I recommend maybe for your first time, just doing your weight division for gi and no gi, and then work in absolute division if you're feeling up to it in the future. And the fifth thing I wish I knew, which kind of ties it together a lot of the points that I've already made, is make a checklist and prepare. Write down a list of everything you need. Some things that you may not think of for your first time is bring an extra gi if you have one, just in case your gi rips. The same can be said about your no gi gear. Bring extras, bring an extra rash guard. Make sure that you are wearing a ranked rash guard, particularly if you're competing in a federation competition, you need to make sure that it's a ranked rash guard. Next thing that I'd put on the checklist is to scope out the venue. Plan where you're going to park, particularly if you're competing in a city like Sydney, where the parking is just atrocious, plan exactly where you're going to park. Scope out any parking facilities around the venue. The kids' divisions are before the adult divisions. So most of the time, all the parking that's at the venue is chock-a-block before you even get there with all the parents and kids that are already competing. So make sure you plan where you're going to park, you plan your route to the venue, you calculate how long it's gonna take, and just have everything good to go at least the day before, or if you're particularly stressed, maybe two days before. If you're interested and you want a bit more direction in what a checklist would look like, I've put my personal checklist down in the description below that you feel free to take. Uh, it's just my what I've learned from personal experience, the things that I need to make sure that I have done or that I am bringing with me to the BJJ competition. Here's the moment you've all been waiting for, the bonus tip. If you watch the video for this long, I really appreciate the support. So the bonus tip is have some form of game plan or a strategy specifically for stand-up. The stand-up is generally pretty static. Everyone just grabs on and holds on for dear life and doesn't really know what they're doing, tries to throw their opponent around a little bit, all of a sudden, it turns into some form of wrestling match. Ideally, with white belts especially, most of your knowledge is in ground game. So you wanna get to the ground as quickly as possible. There's a few different ways to do that. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence, but either have a plan for a takedown, have a plan for a guard pull, or a guard pull into a sweep. Now, when you pick one or two options for a takedown or a guard pull, make sure to have one of 
one of each just in case you can't take your opponent down or you're not feeling comfortable to or you just want to pull guard because you're wrecked make sure that you drill whatever takedown whatever technique that you've chosen for a few weeks ideally a few weeks leading up to that competition and be comfortable with them for me personally all three of the competitions that i've done i have not felt comfortable in the stand-up some of them, yeah, I've, I've been able to secure a takedown. Others, I I've, I've did a lazy guard pull that ended up getting me past. But the, the point is out of like my various matches, about 10 matches that I've had, my stand-up has been the weakest part of my game. If I had a very clear, specific plan and I drilled that technique before going onto the mats in the competition scene, I would have felt a lot more comfortable because at the end of the day, every single jiu-jitsu match starts on the feet so you want to be comfortable on the feet so you can get to the ground and you can demonstrate your jiu-jitsu so those are the five things that i wish that i knew before i started competing in jiu-jitsu all points are from a white belt's perspective those that i've learned from competing three times not not a lot but still a lot of lessons learned i absolutely can say that i recommend everyone compete in jiu-jitsu as my coach says, one competition match is the equivalent of about four weeks worth of training for a white belt. So I highly recommend you get your reps in and uh, get on the competition floor. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you got something out of it, please feel free to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. New videos just like this every week. Thanks for watching.